Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Admiral, we, we're going from 52 ships to 40. Why? Why are we going to just buy 40 of these things? Well, uh, so the requirement for the small surface combatant remains 52. And so we. But Secretary Carter said we're going to build 40. Is it because of budgets? That was a budget driven decision, yes, sir. Okay, so one, the committee needs to know is sequestration probably. Is that right? Is that uh, right, Mr. Secretary? Uh, let me weigh in. Uh, the Budget Control Act, yes, sir. Uh, Secretary's Carter decision was we have to take risk uh, due to the budget and where we're going to okay, take risk. I got you. In the so he said, I'm, I got to do something because I just don't have enough money, so I'm going to like go from 52 to 40. Admiral, you said that people out in the field, out on the, you know, fighting the wars and preventing wars, they like this. They want more of these ships. Is that right? That's correct, sir. Okay. What does this ship do that's so important? What can it do that's different than the ships we have today? Very briefly. Well, certainly, sir. As we as we move forward, the in quote, the building of the of the of the mine uh, is it more stealthy? What makes it different? It gives us uh, it, it it will deliver higher operational availability forward. I think it will give deliver more uh, uh, capacity forward. I think uh, as we bring in the mine sweeping capabilities, as we bring in the anti submarine capabilities, which I think will significantly improve our ability to hunt and track. Is this a modernization program? Are we trying to modernize ships? Is that what this is about? Well, certainly the, the advanced technologies will be, uh, will, that will deliver will be, um, will be of much use to the, to, the, to the sailors as we move them forward. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. All right. So modernization of the existing fleet is one of the goals to be achieved if this ship comes online, right, and operates. It would be more effective. Yes, That's sir. why we're doing this, right? Yes, sir. There's and the reason we're not building 52 is because of money, not because of demand. The world is not safer to justify 40 versus 52. Is that correct? Uh, th that's correct, sir. Okay. When it comes to estimating ships, who actually said $220 million or whatever the number was? Sir, I, we're going to have to go back to the record. To All right, to let's do that. Navy let's, leadership. Right. Well, that's a lot of people. So let's find the guy or gal or the groups of guys and gals that said it's $220 million and see who they are and figure out what we should do about that. I think we should, like, call them in, Mr. Chairman, and talk to them. So it's 448. Why did it go up so much? Was it because we asked for things additional to what was originally required? Was it sort of add-on capability? Uh, so the one major change uh, that was done to the program early on after contract award or, or commensurate with contract award was we changed the specifications to go to what's referred to as naval vessel rules to give it the, the degree of, of uh, design details associated with a state. How much did that add to the cost? It's, it's hard to pin a number on it, but it created extraordinary disruption at the front end of the program. So you can't blame the original people who gave the cost estimate because they weren't confronted with that requirement. That, that's a good point, that that requirement was added after the 220. Who put that requirement on? I'd, I'd have to go back to the record to find out. I want to find out who yes, did the 220. I want to find out who said it needs to do this, not that so we can talk to them as to why they decided that. Mr. Francis, do you have any idea who did that? Um, I, I don't remember at this point, uh, Senator. Um, but I think that what happened with the ship is it was thought to be a relatively simple derivation of high-speed ferries of commercial vessels when they got in, and they made that estimate before they entered detailed design. When they got into detailed design and they got naval vessel rules in, they found out it was way more complicated than they thought. And that was the They major. found that out after they started building the thing? Yes. Okay. So I want to end with this. 
If we don't modernize our force, we'll pay a price. The A-10 works today, but it's not going to work forever because we won't be fighting ISIL forever. There'll be an environment where the F-35 makes more sense. It makes no sense to me to retire the A-10 because it actually works. But all of us need to know what you're trying to do is modernize the force so that the next war we're in or the next war we need to prevent that we're capable of doing both, right? Modernization is not an exact science. So part of the problem is when you modernize your force, it's not like just duplicating something. It's not a commodity. But what have I learned? That in the effort to modernize the force, our estimates of what it cost and the capabilities we need are ever-changing. And the process is completely broken. It goes back to what you said, Doctor, about leadership. If you want this to stop, somebody needs to get fired. One of the reforms we did in this committee is to make every service secretary and service chief responsible for the big programs and under their control. Hopefully in the future, someone will be held accountable and get fired if this happens again. And if nobody ever gets fired, nothing's going to change. Thank you.